Hey folks, Brian Bledsoe with you once again for the October edition of the Ranch Weather Radar, sponsored exclusively by Silvius Insurance. So glad to talk with you again. Uh, again, rounded out summer, headed into fall, lots of stuff happening as always. So uh, I want to get down business with you this afternoon. Again, I'm giving this video to you on October 9th. And this is the short-term drought composite indicator that I snapped just a couple of days ago on October 7th. And you see that we still have some issues in the region, especially across far southeast uh, Montana. But Wyoming, southwest South Dakota, and northwest Nebraska are really dealing with some bad stuff right now. So fortunately, the majority of the state of Montana is in good shape, especially the central part of the state, really from south to north across the central. After we had that big wet storm system that came through a few weeks ago, that really helped to do a lot of good. Again, wish it could have gotten the whole state, but we are certainly doing better uh, than our neighbors just to the south and to the southeast. The past 30 days reflect that. Uh, these are the precipitation anomalies over the past month, and you can see right there in the midsection of the state, we are anywhere from an inch to as much as almost four inches above average for the past 30 days. But again, it was largely due to that one storm. The southeast corner of the state still struggling. We're running over a half inch below average there. Areas over far west and northwest Montana, some good stuff, some not so good stuff. But overall, as I said, the crux of the really dry signal is just to our south and to our southeast. And hopefully we can keep it that way as we head through fall and go into winter. The next uh, two weeks look like this in terms of precipitation anomaly forecast. So this is the forecast, again, for the next couple of weeks where you're seeing the brown, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're not going to see storms. It just simply means that it's going to be below average in terms of uh, precipitation. So average to slightly below average across the majority of the state, the far northwest portion uh, of the state, maybe a little drier. Also the far south central and southeast portion, but right there across the majority of the midsection of the state, we're probably going to end up around average, maybe just a little bit below. The temperature trend though is still going to be one that's going to be warmer than average. This is the forecast temperature anomaly for the next seven days. So this takes us through early on the 17th and uh, these anomalies reflect both nighttime low and daytime high temperatures. So we're running anywhere from, say, uh, 7 to 15 degrees above average across the whole state, depending on your location, with the real uh, stoutest warm signal being over the far south, central, and southwest part of the state. Again, that's for the next seven days. If we look through the from the 14th through the 21st of October, the uh, some of those anomalies come down, but we're overall still well above where we should be, anywhere from, say, three and a half to almost 12 degrees above average, depending on your location across the state. So in terms of any significant cold weather threat headed our way, I just don't see that, at least for the day. Uh, next couple of weeks or so. So I think over the next two weeks, the tip will be to average to slightly drier than average and also warmer than average. I think that is a safe bet right through the 21st of October. Let's broaden the view here and talk about the uh, sea surface temperature anomalies. Again, as we get deeper into the long range forecast, we always want to look at this. A couple of areas of note here, again, along the equator, west of South America, that's where all the blue is. That's reflecting the developing La Nina that's been trying to get going with the cooler than average water there. Across the North Central and Northeast Pacific, there's also some cooler than average water that's uh, showing up. I think that's largely due to the seasonal change that's taking place as additional storms fire their way through the northern Pacific Ocean. But the real main thing that we're focusing on is what this La Nina is going to be doing over the next several months or so and what type of impact that that's going to have on us. A good way to measure that is looking at this uh, graphic right here. This measures the uh, what we call the Nino 3.4 region. It's out there kind of in the central equatorial Pacific Ocean. And all you need to know about this graphic is if you are at plus 0.5 or above, that's generally El Nino. Uh, El Nino. If you are at negative 0.5 or below, that generally reflects La Nina like conditions. And you can see that's exactly where we're headed. But over on the right side of the graph, you see late September and early October, we kind of come up there a little bit, kind of uh, had La Nina quit developing. But here recently, we've seen that trend kind of reverse. And I expect that trend to continue along its development path. One of the big reasons for that is we are seeing a lot of enhanced easterly trade winds blowing across the equator. So again, West of South America, right there along the equator, strong winds are blowing from east to west. And what that does is it removes the warmer surface water and upwells cooler water from beneath. So this graphic right here on the left side goes from October 7th, you see it in the upper left-hand corner there, all the way down through the 21st 
of October. And all of that blue and green in the middle are those enhanced trade winds that are going to continue that will likely continue to develop uh, this La Nina a little bit further. So that's generally the trend over the next couple of weeks and nearly even beyond the next couple of weeks. I think that that's probably a safe bet to continue. Our computer forecast models also see that trend continuing over here on the left side. These are the models that are forecasting uh, whether or not we're going to see La Nina neutral or El Nino. You can see all of the gray bars firmly in the neutral, the white, or pushing over into the light purplish blue shaded area. Um, reflecting La Nina conditions by the end of this month. Again, that's for October. And November, uh, December, this is what the models are forecasting. Only two, or I should say three of them, are forecasting us to still be in firm La Nina territory. That's the JMA, that's a Japanese model. NOAA, that's our model right here in the United States. And the UKMO, that's in Great Britain. So what are the other models doing? They're, most of them are bringing us right up to weak La Nina territory. Whether or not we reach La Nina on all of these models or not, we're likely going to be seeing La Nina-like conditions, okay? Uh, and they are likely going to max out in December and January. And then by the time February gets here, you can see all of those gray bars backing off of that La Nina line. And I think the, the thing to know here is that really as we head through November, December, Jan uh, January, those three months are going to be the heart of this La Nina. And then February, this thing is going to get out of here and will likely be completely gone as we head towards spring. That's what it looks like right now. And if you look up here at the top model, the BOM, that's the Bureau of Meteorology out of Australia, it is actually forecast us to be a little warmer than average in this area as we head into uh, February. What is the significance of that? Some of the computer models are suggesting that after this La Nina ends, Late this winter, we could actually go toward an El Nino during the spring and summer uh, of 2025. That's still a long ways out there, so I don't want to hang my hat on that just yet, but it's certainly some, uh, something that I'm going to be keeping a very close eye on. The differences in these patterns are very stark. On the bottom is La Nina, one consolidated jet stream, ridge in the Northeast Pacific, trough developing across the upper Midwest and the Great Lakes area. It has a tendency to bring colder weather down from Canada. It's much more effective at that. And also wetter weather along and north of that storm track. And farther south you go, you can clearly see where the drier shade is uh, from Southern California, Arizona, New Mexico, and really across the Gulf Coast. Um, during an El Nino, it's pretty much the exact opposite. We are not seeing an El Nino pattern for this upcoming winter. We will see a La Nina pattern for this uh, upcoming winter. And as I talked about in the mid-year meeting uh, back in May, that I thought that this winter was certainly going to be something that was going to be a lot colder and snowier than what we had last winter. And as I said, it doesn't take a whole lot to get that accomplished, considering a lot of us uh, in the Northern Rockies and the Northern Plains did not see much of winter last year. So again, the tip is toward La Nina and the tip is also toward colder than wetter uh, this upcoming winter. So let's look at the computer models. This is the Euro seasonal model forecast, precipitation anomaly forecast, I should say, for November. So again, wherever you're seeing green, that is the model saying wetter than average, obviously be snowier than average conditions are expected. And you see Montana firmly in that camp for the month of November. I think what we're going to end up seeing here is kind of a pivot late this month. And as we head toward November, into November, uh, from this really warm and dry and windy type pattern to a much more wintry like weather pattern that is be more typical uh, for this time of year, at least for the state of Montana. Uh, for December, that wet signal backs off a little bit in the eastern side of the state, but it's still going gangbusters across, especially the western third of the state uh, and westward through Idaho and into the Pacific Northwest. So still, I think the tip there for most of the state is average to wetter than average into December. In January, I still think that that's going to be the case. Uh, wetter than average conditions look to be a pretty good bet right there. You see Montana firmly in the green for the month of January. If we look at February, pretty much the same story. Again, the farther uh, west and northwest you go, the more stout that signal is going to be in terms of uh, you know being snowier than average, uh, which is great news because last year completely failed that. Okay, so this is great news. Um, for March you still see a very similar type pattern. Average in the Southeast, certainly wetter than average the farther west and northwest you go for the month of March. 
and for April, very much the same story. So this is this would be great news. It's it, it's really um, on brand, if you will, for the type of winter I thought we were going to have uh, for Montana with this La Nina that's coming up. And fingers crossed that this actually materializes because we could certainly need uh, certainly use the snow. I also think that because we're going to build that snowpack, that the tendency for temperatures to be colder uh, during the heart of the winter um, is also going to be pretty good too. So uh, certainly much more of a traditional like winter, if you will, is on the table for Montana, the way the Euro model sees it. The NMME model, uh, at least for November, still has a little bit of dryness there across South Central, Southeast Montana. Uh, but the rest of the state would at least be average moisture. The NMME model is a little bit slower in bringing the wetter than average conditions into the state because even December, you see generally all that white across the state is average snowfall for the month of December is what the model is suggesting. If we go to January, that's when the green really starts to show up with snowier than average conditions for the majority of the state with the really dark green showing up there uh, across Northwest Montana for January. If we go to February, same story. The stouter wet signal favors the western third of the state, but all of the state firmly in the green or the wetter than average. If we go to March, we're keeping that trend going. If we go to April, we start to see that wet trend relax a little bit, and we also start to see a little bit of dryness creeping north uh, down across parts of Nevada, Utah, even in the southeast parts of Wyoming. For May, we are still average moisture for the whole state with the dry signal just to the south. The significance of that dry signal moving north is if we turn the page here and go toward an El Nino episode this spring, then I would anticipate drier than average conditions to start to move in from the south uh, during that time. Because typically El Nino usually brings about drier than average conditions across the northern Rockies. I'm not ready to go there yet for the summer of 2025. I think what we need to focus on right now is to see what we're having, uh, what is actually going to happen through the fall and winter season and even into spring before we talk about the summer. We'll, we'll deal with that a little bit later, but for right now, over the next several months, the tip is definitely toward average to above average moisture for the state. The IRI multi-model shows pretty much the same thing. November, December, January, average to above average moisture is being forecast across Montana. You can see the dry signal, the real stout version of it favors the Southern tier. That is very on brand for a La Nina episode. And then if we go Jan, Feb and March, you see again, the, the greatest wet signal is favoring areas over Western Montana. Most of the state though, generally average uh, moisture during that time. And thankfully the dry signal is the stoutest over the far South and Southwest. It is not creeping northward just yet, at least through the month of March. Again, that makes it very important to continue to analyze what's going to happen uh, beyond that time frame. Once La Nina is out of here, what is actually going to follow it up? So that's the information I have to share with you uh, for your October update. If you have any questions whatsoever, as always, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. My number is right there on the screen. And uh, so is my email. If I don't hear from you, uh, then I'll be speaking with you again coming up in November. You folks be well. Thank you.